So now let's take a look at, we've, we've talked about in part, first part, we talked about the overview of the writing language. So let's get down to brass tacks, talk a little bit more about the actual types of questions that you'll see. And I'll, and I'll flip back and forth between uh, practice test three, uh, a sample practice test three, going through some of the questions. Rhetorical uh, types of questions in general. Rhetorical, you've got strategy, organization, style questions. These tend to be the more difficult ones. And then your usage mechanics that you've, that you've dealt with most of your schooling career. Sentence structure, grammar and usage, punctuation. Um, sentence structure include anything from run-ons, fragments, misplaced modifiers, parallel construction. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not going to explain each of these. Is it the... the I, I will go through some examples of them maybe in the um, for, uh, in the uh, practice tests. Pronoun agreement, the number of person, case, whether it's possessive, uh, subject pronoun, object pronoun, possessive, etc. cetera. Um, uh, subject verb agreements and splits, these happen a lot. These happen pretty often um, and, and so on as you, as you move along. Um, then you have usage mechanics, punctuation, semicolons, commas, colons, apostrophes. With the rhetorical questions, it's much more difficult. You have examples that look like reorganizing sentences. Example, what is the best placement for sentence two? Reorganizing paragraphs. Where is paragraph four best place? I'm being an example of a rhetorical type of question. Strategy, connecting sentences and ideas. Looking for transitional words, expressing addition, contrast, effect. Um, integrated transitions. Um, our, the example of strategies, an integrated transition. Uh, let me go back here for just a moment. Connecting paragraphs. How does one paragraph flow into another? It's often with, it's often with um, integrated transitions. It's often with integrated transitions. So as we look at an example of integrated transitions, if I can find my example here of an integrated transition, uh, in the first passage of practice test three, I had one. Here's an example of a rhetorical strategy organization question. The writer is considering adding the following sentence. Should the writer add this sentence? Workers in offices with windows sleeps an average of 46 minutes per night. Should the writer make this addition here? Yes, yes, no, no. These are, these are a typical format for a question. Should it be yes? And then number three is talking about, you know, the body's circadian. Um, the, the sentences around I'm talking about the body's circadian rhythms. Um, and circadian rhythms are controlled by the body's biological clocks. Should should they talk about workers in offices with no sleep an average of 46 minutes more per night than without? No, because it interrupts the discussion of actual circadian rhythms. Here's an example of an integrated transition, number seven, as a rhetorical strategy type of question. Um, in context, which choice best combines the underlying sentences? Um, artificial light sources are a costly aid to worker productivity. So we want to connect um, the, the previous sentence and the previous a thought from the previous sentence talking about um, gaining a, a, a boost in employee morale with this. So aside from lowering um, worker productivity, um, artificial light sources also, are also costly, typically constantly anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of, of a body building's energy use. So um, this is a, an, an example of an integrated transition. It's making a transition from one paragraph to another um, and, and talking about how um, different, uh, different uh, connecting one sentence's um, paragraph to another paragraph's ideas as an integrated transition. You also have, um, excuse me, let's go over back over to the, to the, to the presentation here for just a moment. You also have um, no change in omit. Now with no change in omit, you have to understand that with no change in omit, 25% of the time, the answer is no change. That means it is correct 25% of the time. Um, and when you consider, if you see omit, consider, does the underlying portion need to be there? Oftentimes you have what, what, what's considered redundant words. And how does it relate to the rest of the paragraph? Does it need to be there? More on part three.